Hello and welcome back to another tutorial of the Zelda Breath of the Wild series here in the Unreal Engine 4. Today we make the new Sheikah Slate function called Stasis or Starsits. Uh, and yeah, I will show you now in a video what I meant with that. Alright, so let's see if it works out like in the game. So first we jump right at the top of this moving and rotating platform and we press the right mouse button to, to just target this one, this platform. And if we now press the left mouse button we can freeze it in time and overcome this obstacle so it lasts for 10 seconds and then it goes back to its rotation we can do this again jump right over it yeah that's it for the rotating obstacle now we have another function in the zelda breath of the wild um, it is this that you can freeze objects and store energy in them. So if we now go for the stasis, you can see in the bottom left corner how often I hit it the rock so I don't have a punch animation or something just for the debugging. So if we now go there and press the left mouse button, lock it in time and we hit it one time. Five times. So if we do, do this now, it jumps far further. And if we do this like, yeah, we can, we can do, right. How often can we push this thing? So if we do this now like the times 40 times, it will cast plenty away. So <laughs> you now up right here and you see them running. You can cast them and lock them in time right in the second and you set the constraints to fix the mount so they don't rotate or uh, another location here. So yeah. That's it for the stasis uh, Sheikah Slate function. Um, let's jump right into the blueprint so we can see how we can achieve this. So now we're here in the third person character blueprint and we have just created an apply damage function and get the here it called kugel um, it's german for ball so if we press the e button we apply damage to the object so the next one is the right mouse button the right mouse button is our simply our action tool for choosing our uh, Sheikah slate widgets um, first you call the skill selected, not left it, um, and it is the fourth integer, so the fourth index of the Sheikah slate, so if it is four, it goes into the stasis, so it sets the stasis active. When you press the right mouse button then it goes into a sequence which is doing the line trace um, 
and the actor which is hidden by the line trace will be set it as a time lock actor. Um, in this sequence we go uh, we made a branch and a delay with it with the word data seconds because you cast this line trace just once uh, when you press the right mouse button. This as long as you hold the right mouse button it calls the line trace every delta second. That's it for the third person character template. When we are in the ball, so in, in this rolling ball um, blueprint, we have made a simple sphere. I added a rock material to it. Um, and we call the event tick and the sequence. So now we go into those variables. We have a uh, three rules. We have can be time locked, is time locked, and is movable. So if you got um, some like walls or something, those are things which can't be time locked. So you can make them is time locked or can be time locked. So you can can question if a uh, branch it if it can be time locked. Then we have a is time locked, which we have uh, later on, and is movable. So, like you saw in the in the video, um, the rotating bridge isn't a movable object like the rock, which you can smash away. Yeah, um, for the smashing, and that they get a far stronger input of the impulse you create a damage input array which is a uh, vector array and a damage output impulse so we now branch this the my character is stasis active so if we have the stasis active and it calls true you get into a sequence and do some material stuff here. This isn't that necessary, it's just for, for the um, effect-like thing. So the key is here, if you go into this stasis you and you are with the time lock actor, so you have the time lock actor same as the ball is. Then, and when you press then the left mouse button, you can, so you if you press then the left mouse button, here's the branch, and you go then and set the target is time locked. Um, this one here is just those change which are comes up when you time lock it. So it's it's really simple. You branch it if the stasis is active, then you check if the time locked actor is the same actor as the ball. And if this is the case and you press the left mouse button, it calls that it is time locked. So if you now time lock this thing, you let the um, right click, you release the right click, so it goes into is stasis active, so it's um, false in the third person character. This causes that you have the stasis active false, which then goes into this branch and checked if it's time locked. So if it is time locked, um, it will check so if it is time locked you can you can drag out a pin of the sequence by event tick and branch this 
is time locked and if this is true set the constraint mode to 6DOF you can go into your class set uh, into your class defaults and no that's not the right one You go into the sphere then and under physics and simulate physics under constraints you lock the position and lock the rotation in mode 6DOF so you lock everything by default so if it is time locked you set the constraint mode to 6DOF and if it's not you see uh, constraint mode none so those normal variables which are default are not persistent so they don't exist here that is nothing locked in position or rotation you make this up with a delay and then after this delay you set is time locked to false so it gets back to normal if you now have the stasis false and is time locked false it sets the material back to normal and resets all those material do once nodes whatever um, and after this one after those 10 seconds it gets the do once node and a for each loop node so for this for each loop node I will go a little bit up and get into the event any damage node so how I said you get when you press E and you overlap with the thing you have um, you will be able to to do damage to it normal damage would be you you just uh, subtract some HP or something but here you don't have the HP you just have the the branch if it's checked if it's movable and then check if it's time locked so if it's not time locked you can't do damage to it and can't cast and add some things to those uh, to those vector array so if you now add to the array every time you get damage to it you put you add an array uh, you add an uh, index to the array damage input which is a Z constraint which is fixed and I use now the get player camera manager get actor forward vector multiplied it by 250 so it just adds and neglates maybe if you if you write smash them from both sides it, ne it neglects uh, the the X and Y so you can it would be just push right into the Z axis you know what I mean um, after you edit this this is not necessary here this is something else um, which I not made here um, back to the after time lock launch sequence so you go now for the eat for each loop um, node put the array damage input here and set the damage output impulse the array element plus the damage output impulse and set it this makes the output impulse um, adding every single impulse you made in the time you pu uh, you pressed E on it so every time you hit it it will add, uh, add up those values those vectors and add the impulse to the uh, sphere after this you clear the damage input and set the damage output impulse to zero so you can begin from new yeah for the bridge it's the same way but you have just uh, no damage application here yeah this is it for this 
tutorial. Um, if you liked it, just press like. Um, I know it is a little bit complicated and I'm not the best tutor here, but I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, just press the up thumb. And if not, please, I, I recommend you to, to write a criticize to the, under this video in the comment section. Thank you very much for listening and watching. See you next time when it comes to another tutorial of the Zelda Breath of the Wild series.